Next up, we want to look for the molecular geometry of NF3. To do that, first we need the Lewis structure. And then beyond that, we go to the Vesper chart in order to find out what the um, what the best structure that would minimize um, the energy of the molecule is. And so, for the valent for the Lewis structure, I start by counting my valence electrons. So I have five from the nitrogen plus three by seven because of the fluorine. This is going to give me 21 plus 5, so I have 26 electrons to work with here. I start with N as my central atom, it can make the most bonds, and attach three fluorines. And begin by filling in all of the octets. See if I have any leftover electrons to place on my central atom. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. I have two electrons. The nitrogen needs two electrons to fill in its octet. That makes the most sense. Now, in order to go to the Vesper chart and use it, I need to first know the steric number. And I can see that I have three bonding pairs and one lone pair, and so that's going to give me a steric number of four. I should note that the notation will be AX3E, because I have three bonding pairs here and one lone pair here. And so when I go to the um, Vesper chart, Okay, so now I go to total domains. I know the steric number is four, and so um, the version of this where it's just four bonding pairs and isn't telling me anything about, sorry, um, where the steric number is four and not telling me anything about how many lone pairs or bonding pairs I have, that's going to be the electron geometry, and that is going to be tetrahedral. The molecular geometry will include how many bonding pairs or lone pairs I have and so that's when I'm going to go to my specific generic formula or account for the fact that I have one lone pair and so that is going to be trigonal pyramid. And that is it for this question.